Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and welcome to another episode of the Learning FreeCAD for Beginners where we teach the fundamentals of FreeCAD whilst we learn workflows. Today we're going to be looking at creating a phone case. Now there are two videos to this. There's one video for the part workflow and there's another video that uses a part design workflow. So I've created two videos and it's up to you which one you want to choose. Just gives you the option to take either path. So this one is for the part design workflow and we're going to be creating this phone case in there. We're going to be using pads, pockets and boolean features for this. So I hope you enjoy the channel and let's have a look at this workflow. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash m-a-n-g-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. So in FreeCAD and I'll start a new document. This is the part design workflow for the phone case. So we're gonna first start by coming over to the part design. Within the part design, we're gonna to go to create a body or use the icon from the top and create a sketch. Again, we can use the icon from the top. We're going along the X, Y plane and hit okay. So what we're going to do is create the blank for our phone and remove it from another body. So we're gonna use it like a mold. This is just going to be a simple blank. So it's basically the shape of the phone. I'm going to use a rounded rectangle, this one here. We could use normal rectangle and say chamfer off the size. We'll fill it off the size with a fillet tool. But I'm going to use the rounded rectangle. And we'll create our rectangle and take these points here and make them symmetrical to the center, like so. This means that we can create features like the port symmetrical here and just makes our life a lot easier when creating this because the phone has symmetry. Remember, this is just a simple shape. Now let's get some height in here. So my phone, the height of this, is 160 millimeters. The width on these two points is 73 millimeters. So it's an invalid constraint here. That's okay that. And that's because, well, we need to bring these in a bit. Let's sort these out and pull them up. Now we should be able to do this. Let's take these two points, set a distance of 73 millimeters. So we've got our basic shape of the phone. Let's place a radius across here. Let's go for a radius. Let's say some mil. So we've got our basic phone shape here. Let's close that. With this sketch, we'll pad this to the size of the phone, so eight mil. So this is the width of my phone. Now I'm gonna add some fillet in because my phone isn't this shape, it's got filleted sides, so smooth sides. So I'm going to come in and select the pad, I'll select that top face, and come in and add the fillet. So this tool here, the fillet, also available from part design, hit apply, a dress up, and add the fillet. At the moment, face 10 has been selected, so that's select the other face as well. So click add and click the other face. And now what we can do is set the radius of the fillet. So I'm going to go for something like 3.5. So we've got our fillet in there. Let's hit OK. Now we've got the blank of our phone. I'm going to rename that body to blank body. But we haven't quite finished yet. We need to make some height in here. So we need to make another sketch. So we pad it upwards 
allowing us to use this with a cut against, say, a rectangle. If we think about a rectangle in here and we pad this forwards, whichever way we're going to do this, may do the rectangle on the top, then we need a way of opening up that rectangle to get the phone inside when we create a cut with this object. So I'm going to select the top face and create a sketch. That's going to be mapped flat face to that sketch. And now I'm going to use, again, another rounded rectangle. And I'm going to place it within here. So that's just bringing this rectangle and place it somewhere in here for the time being. Now to get this position properly, I'm going to pull in these edges. So this edge and this edge. Pulling those edges, what I can do is take the escape, take this point and this line, point on object constraint, and do the same with this one as well. This point and this line, point on object constraint, and I can place them on that line like so, and then set a distance between these two with a distance. We'll say 1.75. So that's constrained. You can see the green in there. That's constrained. We do the same down the bottom. But because of the radius, that radius won't change because that's locked. So all we need to do is literally pull this down to the bottom, down here. Let's pull it near and zoom in and pull in one of these edges and then again do the same hit escape take this point and this edge and a point on object constraint let's bring in the other edge this one here hit escape take this point and this edge again point on object constraint you see how this is locked down and that's because well we've got an equal radius here and because these are positioned, it's fully constrained our geometry with this single constraint, single that and constraint here. Let's hit close. So now we've got our sketch sitting on top of here. We got to move this sketch now to move it downwards because what we want to do is intercept the sketch on this line here. So now we've got the sketch, we need to pad this. So when we pad this, be careful, because if we look from the side, we can see we pad this straight up. We're going to get some gapping in here. We don't want that. So let's click pad on that sketch and click symmetrical to plane. And then all we have to do is come to the length and set that to some length, say about five. We just want this coming out the top to allow us to access the phone. Let's hit OK. And now we've got our pad in there. So we've got our phone blank. When this is removed from material, this pad will allow for the access point and this part, the body, will allow for the hollow inside to place our phone in there. So now what we want to do is make sure nothing's selected and create a new body. This body, we're going to rename it, right click the name, and this is going to be the case body. So we're just going to rename that to case body. The body is the active body. We can see it active in there. It's in bold. If it's not in bold, we just click on it, right click toggle active body. It has to be active because the next procedure is to take this face and create a subshape binder. This will allow us to access the geometry inside the case body. So we want to access this geometry on top of here to allow us to place a sketch upon there. So make sure it's selected, highlighted in green, use the subshape binder or part design, create a sub object shape binder. Binder has been created here and you can see it sitting on top. Now we've got two options here. We can select the top of that binder 
at the moment you see a select in the top of this pad if we create a new sketch here it's going to ask us to make an independent copy etc but if we hide this blank body and then select the top of the binder and create a new sketch it will place it on top of there and we can add the sketch for our case which in this case will be something like just a rounded rectangle like so but if we're using a rounded rectangle well there's no need to use this sketch in here because we have our phone which is a rounded rectangle anyway i'm going to close that and delete the sketch now let's bring back the blank body and what we're trying to do is take some kind of shape and create a body that can contain this so we can remove the blank away from the body. The binder has offset so we come down if we look at the options down here we have an offset and we can use that to offset by say 3 mil and click off. See how the binder has moved away. So if we get this to the right size, let's say five mil, depending on how big we want this, something like that, then if we extruded this, we can enclose the whole of this blank inside and remove the blank from the extrude. Well, in this case, it would call a pad. The first thing we need to do is move that binder now. We've created the offset, make sure the binder is selected and come up to the placement. For this placement here, we need to move it along the Z axis. Now, the reason why is if we move it down, you can see we can get it to intersect the top of this shape here, which is about three millimeters. The reason why we do that, well, if we create a cut with it, say here, then we're gonna get this length going upwards which we don't want. So instead of just the curve and the foam fitting inside here, you're gonna have this height, which we don't want. Let's move that down to minus three mil. So we've got that there. Now click the binder and use the pad. We can pad a binder. It's gone the wrong way at the moment. Click on reverse. That's reversed it downwards. And we can select the length. So let's set this to something like seven and click off. And you can see, well, that's come down, but it's not cleared the phone. It's not giving us the right depth. Let's set this to back to 10. So we have that there. So this is a couple of millimeters on the bottom of the phone. And hit OK. So we've got the case body now. This is basically the finished case body for the time being before we do the cut. We're gonna to add to it afterwards. Now I say add to it afterwards. We could add say sketches around here for the ports and pocket those in there to a depth. Or we could carry on and create the Boolean cut. If we add the ports then the cut will incorporate those in there. Let me show you. So to do the boolean cut between these, I want to remove this blank from this body. The one we want to keep is currently the active body. So case body is the active body, it's in bold. So we need that in bold, toggle active body. So that's in bold. This is the one we want to keep. Make sure nothing's selected. Come up to part design. Boolean operation. The active body disappears. So this means it's asking for a body to take away or fuse against your active body. Click add body and click on this body here, the phone blank. It's added it, but it's fused it. You can see that the edges have taken. Come over to the left, click where it says fuse and click cut and we now have the cut taken away from there. So that blank has been taken away from that rounded edge rectangle.
let's hit OK. So now what we can do is add the bolts. So we can come in, select, say, this face here, create a new sketch, and start adding the ports. So let's create a slot in here, like so. And take these two points, make them symmetrical with this vertical line, using the symmetry constraint. I'm not sure how wide my reports are, so I'm just going to freestyle this. Let's add some circles in. So for the phone jack and the microphone that goes there, and take these two points and this point and make those in line and click close. So we've got that there. We can use that sketch by clicking on it and using the pocket and popping it through the wall, however far we want to place that. I've got it five mil. If it doesn't go through, just increase this and hit OK. And it's just the case of adding those features in there. So for instance, I selected that face, create a sketch, and I could add a rectangle in here, let's say about here. We just measure it up, figure out what it is for, for the camera. Let's say our camera is sitting somewhere like this and it close. So that's there. And we can use the pocket on that. Pocket all the way through, length 5mm, that's enough to get through to the other side. And you can see, well, we're adding all the features we need for the cutouts that we need to be accessible from the phone. So it's a very simple case with this workflow of just building up the features wherever we want to place them. And that is basically about it. That's how simple this workflow is. And we end up with our end result. So I hope that was useful. Remember, if you want to follow the part workflow, then there's another video for that. It takes you through the whole process. I've placed that in the description below. And if you want to follow that workflow, very similar, but from a part workbench rather than part design, it's there for your consumption if you want to. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.